The Xbox versus PlayStation console battle continues. Now with leaked specs for the PS5 Pro and Xbox teasing they're going to show and reveal new hardware for holiday 2024. Now everyone wants to know who's going to have the best hardware and the best games. This is Cold Eastwood. Thank you so much for checking out today's video. We're going to break down the specs of the PS5 Pro and what that means for this coming generation and how Xbox might be starting their next generation early with a few surprises along the way. If you end up enjoying this video, let me know by liking and subscribing to the channel. Hit the bell and let's talk about PS5 Pro and the next Xbox hardware. Just this past week, the PS5 Pro was leaked ahead of PlayStation's announcement and reveal plans for what they're planning to do for the next console. Now they're supposed to put out an announcement this summer for the new PS5 Pro, an elitist model that will boost frame rate and resolution and be the answer to all of these games that run at 1080p 60 frames, even some probably still stuck at 30 FPS. The PS5 Pro boasts a 45% jump in rasterization for GPU rendering. That's the pixels and visuals you see on screen. And a 28% boost in memory RAM, which will make big open world games come to life a lot easier. But the real interesting setback is the PS5 Pro has a paltry 10% frequency boost on the already existing PS5 CPU. A CPU right now that has just a few games running at 30 and others struggling to hold 60 FPS, mostly hanging around 55 FPS on big action adventure games. The funny thing about this CPU with the PS5 Pro is it was a beast. This whole console was supposed to be a major monster eating beast once it was revealed early last week. And now with this 10% clock boost, it shows that the PS5 Pro is at 3.85 gigahertz for frequency, which compared to the Series X at 3.8 is just a 1.3% performance boost in frame rate or performance over the standard Xbox Series X that came out in 2020. Digital Foundry just covered the specs in full on their channel and made a point to show that the PS5 Pro won't bring frame rate up and above the limitations. There are games that are going to be coming out this coming generation that might be at 30 FPS. One of the most prominent games is Grand Theft Auto 6, which is coming out at the end of 2025 or just after that. Digital Foundry has said in the past as they started to look into leaks that the compute units and the processing and clock speed for the PS5 Pro doesn't mean that it could run at 60 FPS. Here's what they had to say. The games that are targeting 30 FPS are not right now are not going to be targeting 60 frames per second on PlayStation 5 Pro if they're CPU limited. So, you know, all of the sort of conjectures that, hey, this is going to be a great uh, box for Grand Theft Auto 6. Uh, we'll be able to run that at 60 frames per second unless there's some magical CPU stuff being done by Rockstar. I suggest that's not going to happen. Extra 10% on clocks isn't really going to do much at all. It will help your sort of worst possible frame rates when you're CPU limited, but it's not a game changer. I think that's that's pretty clear. Major PlayStation fans hoping that the PS5 Pro would be their saving grace to bring the biggest game, Grand Theft Auto 6, that won't be on PC at launch to 60 FPS over the Xbox consoles and even base model PS5s have a lot of disappointment heading their way. And I would predict that the only way the PS5 Pro has Grand Theft Auto 6 at 60 FPS is if there's a performance mode for the Series X and the PS5. In fact, I would like to ask you this question before we move forward. Maybe there's a parity clause within Microsoft, Sony, or even Rockstar that wouldn't allow just one console SKU, the PS5 Pro, to run a game in single player and multiplayer at 60 FPS. I don't know if that's true, but there certainly have been clauses where games need to run across the same for the platforms. But the boost clock for the CPU, the processor, is only 10% above. And there's a big reason why PlayStation can't make a CPU right now that is any faster than a 10% boost over the base model PS5. And that's because of backward compatibility. If you're a PlayStation fan, consider yourself very lucky that you get 
any backward compatibility at all. Digital Foundry says, the way Sony handles back compat is very complex and it requires the new hardware to run at the same or higher clock speed even if the new hardware is faster at lower clock speeds because the PS5 Pro could break backward compatibility with PS4 and even PS5 games moving forward on the PS6. So we could dive into all the specs, but what people really want to know is how much will the PS5 Pro cost? Well, this console is coming out in holiday 2024. The PS5 launched in 2020 at a standard US price point of $500 for the disc-based console and $400 for the diskless console, the digital PS5. What PlayStation wants to do is make a half step or some type of step increase to fix margin problems with the hardware and games for profitability. So PlayStation could be setting the cost of the PS5 Pro upwards some 600 or 700 dollars a lot of people right now looking at the specs with 33 percent more teraflops which is a measurement that doesn't really work in the real world but we'll say it here on the video anyway looking at these specs it looks like a very expensive console but in reality it's market price point that dictates what the cost of the console will be there is a little bit of profit margin that has to go in there but PlayStation has already worldwide increased the console $50 over the $500 price point. So it would stand to reason that the PS5 Pro could come in at $550 worldwide or up to $650. I think the PS5 Pro will come in one variant, one SKU that is diskless, a digital PS5 Pro that is modular on the bottom to take the current disk drive, that would be the best point to have those three consoles, the digital, the base PS5, and the PS5 Pro, two of them being digital, PS5 Pro for $600 in the US. But what does this mean for Xbox fans? Of course, there's major FOMO going on against the world's most powerful console, Xbox Series X, no more. But there have been rumors about Xbox starting next generation far earlier than PlayStation. If they put out a Pro model in 2024, this surely means that they're going to the PS6 in next generation in 2028. Xbox has plans reportedly or rumored to be in 2026. Just recently, an Xbox dev kit was reported by La in South Korea. It was approved on Monday, March 18th and it is being manufactured in China and Vietnam. Now, this could be anything. It could be an iterative dev kit for the Xbox Series S and X. A South Korean developer recently spoke up and said that you do not have to claim a new dev kit if it is an iterative or a slight upgrade, even stating that the dev kit does not need to be reported to their government if it is just a digital Xbox Series X. So here is what Sarah Bond said in the Xbox developer update last month. And we got more to come. There's some exciting stuff coming out in hardware that we're gonna share this holiday. And we're also invested in the next generation roadmap. And what we're really focused on there is delivering the largest technical leap you will have ever seen in a hardware generation, which makes it better for players and better for creators and the visions that they're building. She says holiday 2024, which if they're having showcase, their Xbox showcase in June, we won't see an announcement for any consoles or hardware, but Holiday is usually when Xbox does something big at the Video Game Awards for Jeff Keighley's show in December. Maybe this means, and I'm not really convinced that Xbox would reveal that they're working on next generation at the end of 2024 for release two years later in Holiday 2026. But Xbox actually showed the Xbox Series X at the Video Game Awards in 2019, which is exactly one year before the console launch. So if Sarah Bond is teasing that they're going to maybe explain that they have next generation coming in 2026, actually what they're going to do is possibly announce or reveal the Xbox handheld. This would be an Xbox Series S powered handheld like the ROG Ally or the Steam Deck. The Xbox handheld is also supposed to be a dockable Xbox handheld that can be played on your TV or on the go that is co-developed with the Xbox hardware team and the Microsoft Surface team. So expect a little more power than the base Xbox Series S or possibly more power while it's docked thanks to some designs that would work in concert with the Surface team. This would be a really great 
portable, handheld, and something Xbox could really get fans excited for globally. Is delivering the largest technical leap you will have ever seen in a hardware generation. The most technological leap ever to me says that Xbox actually plans to make a console that is a bigger leap than anything they've ever done between console generations. And this is a puzzling thing to hear and it may come off as super hyperbolic as Xbox promised the moon and the stars with the Xbox Series X and has not delivered on all of those promises. The PS5 Pro definitely will give a multi-platform advantage for every game that comes to the mainstream consoles across PlayStation and Xbox with a slightly or more stable frame rate. Yes, Xbox needs to respond with the PS5 Pro, but I just don't think it works that way. There's no way they're going to quick fast track a new console to compete with the PS5 Pro. And it sounds like Xbox has other things in mind, like possibly putting out early next year a handheld, an Xbox handheld that will play all the games you already own. If they get ready to move us into next generation two years earlier than the PS6, the Xbox Series S2 and X2 are going to be pretty incredible consoles as long as they deliver on their promise of power with no compromise. This is Cole Eastwood. Thank you so much for watching this video. I've been talking about games more than anything, but this past couple months, it's been all about hardware and everyone's excited about new consoles. And I'll tell you what, if Xbox was going to put out a $600 pro model Xbox Series X, I would buy it. In fact, I know it sounds funny. I would buy a digital Series X if it was packed in with a brand new controller. I want to see developers push what they can do with the consoles, but maybe give us some more of that choice and let us change some settings to prioritize frame rate because, oh, I didn't even cover. Let's, well, we got to get into Grand Theft Auto 6. I don't know where I'm going to cover that in. It, it's, oh, it's before back and pat. Put this in before back and pat. But we'll just have to wait and see what that price is for the PS5 Pro. I'm still saying 600 and we'll see if Xbox really does have something cool to show us at the end of this year. If you end up enjoying this video, let me know by liking and subscribing to the channel. Hit the bell to be notified of new weekly content. If you want to further support the work we're doing here on the Cole Eastwood channel, you can do that by hitting the join button below, or you can join the Patreon or the channel membership there, and you can get early access to videos. Uh, also, if you want to check out the long form discussion we do on the Ecstasy podcast, that's every Monday at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. We're also on demand on Spotify and Google and Apple Podcasts and those other platforms. So you can check that out uh, on your drive or whenever you feel like that. That's a great show. Thank you for supporting that. I want to know what you think about the PS5 Pro. Are you going to get that? Did you want Xbox to make an Xbox Series X Elite Pro thing? Um, are you just going to wait for this handheld or next generation? Let me know in the comments. And while you're there, as I always say, be nice.